What's up, everybody? Here we go one more time. It's Eddie O'Hanion coming at you from Here's the Bling. We got a special Industry Insiders Presents. This time we got Zenogen with us. And from Zenogen, our special guest for today is Jen Watson. She's the Director of Education. What's up, Jen? Hey, how's it going, Eddie? How are you? Awesome, awesome, awesome. So as awesome. we do, as always, uh, introduce yourself. I, I know you as the director, but how does everybody else know you as? Okay, cool. Yeah. So like you said, my name is Jennifer Watson. I am a licensed cosmetologist. I've been in the industry for about 15 years. I've done a little bit of everything in the industry from uh, sales through distributor, commission booth uh, renter, and then most recently a salon owner. I um, gave turned over my salon to my co-owner once I saw the results of Xenogen on myself and my customers and decided that I needed to share the love about hair loss. So that's kind of how I ended up here. I do do all things education for Xenogen and, you know, wherever else I'm needed, I'm there as well. So, yeah, it's been a good journey. That is awesome. And congrats on the salon. That's really cool, too. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. And then the other thing that uh, some of our, well, most of our audience knows about Xenogen, but the, some of them that don't know, uh, how would you describe the Xenogen product? So I describe, oftentimes I describe Xenogen as a plant-based shampoo and conditioner treatment for low density hair. And so the product kind of was birthed out of the need for simplicity and advancement in science. And um, that's where we came from. So it's just as simple as a shampoo and conditioner um, used three times per week. And what we're learning with technology and advancement in science with hair loss is prevention is key. And so the earlier you can start your journey with prevention, the better. So, yeah, easy to use. And then in, in the recent couple of years, there was also the retail that came out and that was an awesome addition. Uh, and it's just four products, four simple products that really are amazing. And a lot of people don't know about them until they get their hands on them. And then they start to realize like, whoa, wait, wait a minute. What? What is this? Exactly. So are you going to be able to share with us a little bit about the retail today as well, too? Oh, yeah. So, the well, yeah, we, this is our line. So we have the men, the women's Revolve is all things hair loss. So we have another line called Evolve, which works a little bit differently. But today our focus is Revolve. So we have a men's formula, a women's formula, and then a unisex conditioner. Mm -hmm. And then um, that's that's hair loss. And then we also have a boost line. So we have a retail support line that helps. There's four products in that category. And what they do is help to support the external hair and definitely help to support scalp health on the journey as well. So the two of those used together, Boost um, Retail alongside of the shampoo and conditioner is really just sets the client up for success on their hair loss journey or hair regrowth journey. You know, and I love the way you're saying journey because a lot of people, they don't think about hair loss as a thing. They, it's, it's just one of those things where it's okay. inevitable, it's gonna happen, right? But right. they don't realize there's actually so many things that can be done. And, and that's that journey that you're talking about. If, if you catch it from the beginning, you know, like right now we have our hair. We don't think much of it. We're like, I'll deal with it later. But right. that's the whole point. You don't have to deal with it later. So what is some of the things, you know, a lot of people talk about DHT buildup. A lot of people talk about um, it's genetics. You know, a lot of people mm -hmm. talk about you know, they, they got all these uh, old wives tales that they can go by to, you know, if you eat certain things, if you drink certain things, if, if you do, you know, stretches in certain ways, you'll never lose your hair type of thing. What, what right. are some of the ways you can talk to us about what actually, what is hair loss? Why? why uh, and, and what it is that we can do to stop it or, or at least okay, curve sure. it. Yeah, absolutely. And so it's just like anything else. As we age, um, our bodies slow down and things begin to you know, become a, come available will come about hair issues and health issues. So, um, you know, about 10 or 15 years ago, there was not much research in hair loss at all. We kind of just did what you said. We kind of just said, oh, it's going to happen. You know, some people shave their head or wear a hat or try the best to do a different haircut to kind of hide it. But now we're learning with advancement and science and technology that there is a lot we can do to prevent the hair loss. The two main causes of hair loss are inflammation of the follicle and the, and the sensitivity to DHT. And so one thing that I like to really teach about is that hair loss happens internally way before we see it externally. Hmm. So once someone comes and sits in our chair and they're experiencing hair loss, 
it almost becomes like an urgent care situation to me. Like, okay, I know this has been happening for quite some time internally. So now it is time for us to address the issue um, kind of rapidly, like, and you know, quickly, because it's, it's only going to decline because we have to think about things that cause the inflammation in our follicle and things such as that, um, things that do that are things such as like um, stress, and that's the big one we're dealing with right now. Illnesses of any kind, medication buildup, um, surgery causes hair loss, hormonal imbalances cause hair loss, um, diet can cause hair loss, um, things like that. Stress, I said that, hormones um, and, th and thyroid. That was the big one I was getting to. So thyroid gland. So I'm going to use this little hair model for a second. So basically, this is showing the internal workings of our hair. And we know that that's a very small space because from the epidermis all the way into the dermal layer is, is very tiny. So the minuscule amounts of things that we consume aggravate our hair follicle. And then anytime this little follicle is out of whack, out of its system, um, then it begins to kind of slow with the growth process and cycle and inflammation sets in. And so when inflammation sets in, it causes this whole process to slow down. We have like a hundred, over a hundred thousand follicles on our head and they are each, each one of these follicles are like mini organ systems. So they're a cluster of stem cells that all work together to produce a hair strand. And if everything is great and in working order, then there's no issues. But when some someone has something such as a surgery crawl up, they have to get a surgery done or a medication change, or they just had COVID or they're super stressed, that causes e the system to be off even more. And so that inflammation sets in, it allow it does not allow this to take in nutrients. And then eventually over time, just like this sh is shown, you will begin to miniaturize, the hair will miniaturize and fall out. And so as a stylist, we just have to be aware of the things that cause inflammation in the follicle have a sensitivity to DHT. DHT is just a hormone that's in all of our bodies. Men have more DHT in their bodies because of the testosterone. It's, it's derived from testosterone. And so if they have a sensitivity to it, they are going to lose their hair. And if, and then if you pile all the other things in life on top of that, it's inevitable. So as a stylist, it's important to understand what causes that. And then the simple steps that they can take to help bring that inflammation and DHT down. And now obviously we can't follow our customers home every day and watch what they eat and watch if they work out and if they are doing this and that. But in our control, we can send something home as simple as a shampoo because we're gonna shampoo till the end of time. And then this is gonna work from the inside out to get rid of that problem. So most of the shampoos that are sold in the salons work on the epidermis. That's what they're supposed to do, cleanse the hair and scalp. And then that's as molecularly as good as it gets. But the biggest point of difference with us is we reach this dermal layer mm. and we shield that follicle from inflammation and we cleanse out all that DHT. That was a really long answer, but hopefully I, I that. I love <laughs> the science though. I, look, <laughs> okay. everybody knows I, you know, so, uh, so like we, we have, we have one person in particular, you know, Paula calls me the hair guru, you know, everybody <laughs> else calls me the nerd, you know, I love <laughs> this science stuff. I eat it up for breakfast. So, but it's, it. it's really important to understand truly what is happening and and that's always my thing the stuff we use and the things we do as long as we understand what its purpose is and why we're doing what we're doing it for then we can decide okay it's worth using this for this you this for that you know one of the things i get about xenogen is oh how often do i have to use it you know do i really have to do it three times a week you know what if i do it every day what if i only want to do it one you know i only wash my hair once a week type of thing and then the other second thing i get is what am i supposed to do for five minutes in the shower i'm like well <laughs> i don't yeah. know what to tell you about that part yeah but yeah. um usually what i tell the guys and being a guy myself is look put the, you know, massage the treatment in. I don't know. I've moved a mirror into the shower. I shave my face in there. It don't take that long. I wash the rest of my body. I don't know what else to do for the, for the last couple of minutes, but uh, you know, I, I put a radio on and I just stand there and, and hang out for a minute, pretend I'm in the locker room or in a sauna or something. I don't know, blast the heat on, on the, on the temperature. Women don't have that issue. They, they can find plenty to do in that five minutes or longer. And that's the other question is, you know, so what if it sits on a little bit longer? You know, everybody says, right. I, I have to set a timer for this. 
you ain't got to set a timer for that, but, but you know, to, to, to optimize the usage of it. So if, if you don't mind speaking to that, just to get a little more clarification, because apparently I'm not doing a good enough job <laughs> explaining it to people. I'm just making people laugh when I explain, you know, what to no, do for five minutes in the shower. <laughs> Right. Yeah. And, you know, we are humans, so we have a really grand experience in overcomplicating everything. <laughs> and so it's shampoo, people. It's really OK. You've been shampooing since you were born and it's OK. In five minutes, we deserve five minutes in the shower. And oftentimes people that are in that time crunch don't even realize they're spending five minutes anyway, but just because we've asked them to spend five minutes, then it's like, hold on a second. So I'll, I'll explain this. So the the product is to be used three times per week. And the reason for that is that is about basically how long that science works for about 48 to 72 hours. And then naturally those, those um, ingredients that are like protecting this um, follicle begin to dissipate. And then it's time to use the product again. So with that being said, using it daily is not going to give you better results because it's set up to be used three times per week and they're not going to get their money's worth out of it or the 90 days. So this is important. This last 90 days for a price point reason, but also it gives enough time for our hair cycle to happen so that we can actually have an opportunity to take care of that follicle because we know hair loss doesn't happen overnight, so it's not going to get fixed overnight. And so daily use is not necessarily going to give you better results. So I would stick with the three times per week. I usually tell my customer with a Monday, Wednesday, Friday routine so that they don't have to get confused or forget. And oftentimes when people are losing their hair, they're very sensitive to everything. Like mm -hmm. I need to make sure I use this properly. I don't want to mess up. I don't want my hair to fall out more. So I usually say Monday, Wednesday, Friday are your regrow days. If they are daily washers, that's wonderful. That means that they can still take home their favorite whatever that the stylist has been wanting them to use along with their other um, products. So it doesn't take away from existing retail. So if they use it, um, if they are daily washers, they can still take home their favorite whatever in between. And then if they only shampoo once or twice a week, that's okay too. It just takes a little bit longer to see results. The sweet spot is really those three times per week. And I have a lot of people that, a lot of gentlemen specifically, that will put the product on like at the sink. Like they may spray their scalp down and emulsify it and apply it and then do their beard work at the sink mm -hmm. or whatever, skincare, whatever the case may be, then hop in the shower and rinse it off. And that, that makes up for the five minutes. Some people do the timer and some people do a, a music, like you said. But if you put it on as soon as you get in the shower, really, you, you have to do something for five minutes. I mean, we have to cleanse ourselves. And then also self-care. So we deserve five minutes to take a breather, like you said, pretend you're in a sauna. And that is actually going to help out their hair loss journey because stress causes the inflammation. So if you can take five minutes, 15 15 minutes a week to regrow your hair and that's all we're asking no third step it's it's really kind of takes out all the complexity of it for sure so that and and I, I love that I, I love that idea of putting it on before and then doing what you got to do and then sure. hopping in afterwards you know that's a great idea too so that that's cool what is so what is some of the differences you know a lot of the hair regrowth they talking about hormones they talking about uh, steroids, you know, some of them are ingestible. These are topical, you know, there's, there's nutraceutical category. And, mm -hmm. and if you could spend a minute to speak on to differences on those, you know, that would be great if you don't mind. Sure. No, I don't mind at all. So steroids, uh, reduce inflammation. So, but they're just a very, you know, um, intense kind of way of doing that. And they work for some people and some people use those remedies in conjunction with our product. The beautiful thing is you can use Xenogen alongside of other systems if they want to. Um, and that's okay. It's just a little bit harder to gauge results as a stylist. I wanted to make sure I kind of knew what my customer was on so that I didn't see results from something else, right? So I want to make sure that I'm in zone with what they're using. But so to speak to other treatments, most of them are chemical filled. The most common one is minoxidil. And that's been around for years since in the 80s. 
that is the main ingredient in over-the-counter treatments such as Rogaine. Um, you see it a lot in infomercials now with Keeps and Hems. Uh, there's all these, you know, we're inundated with commercialized hair loss products. The thing about minoxidil is when it was put on the market in the 80s, it was marketed as a blood pressure medication. And the reason for that was because it it allows the blood pressure or the blood vessels to vasodilate. So they get larger. So when that comes to hair, this is the red and blue indicates um, blood supply. So we have to have nutrients in that blood supply to kind of get this machine rolling. We have to have carbs, proteins, amino acids, oxygen, iron, those ingredients. So if this blood vessel is much larger and there's a much more oxygen and carbs and proteins coming through, yeah, this follicle is going to be super happy. And that's great. And that probably works. And it does work for a lot of people. It's just really not a sustainable choice because once you do decide to discontinue the use of minoxidil, it, it's, it kind of puts the follicle in shock because it was so used to having all these nutrients. And then one day you just think, I'm not gonna put that on anymore. I'm kind of tired of using that. I'm gonna switch over to this thing. And then the follicle is like, hold on a second. I had all these nutrients and now I don't, I'm gonna shut down. And then it releases that hair. So, and it's a blood thinner. So if someone has issues, like if they have a pacemaker or if they have other issues health-wise, it's not the best of choice for them, but um, they can use minoxidil in conjunction with us. Um, it's just not something that I would stick with personally forever. And it and once they realize that research in the 80s that it does make the um, the blood pressure dissipate, it also made the hair grow. So that's when they switched the whole marketing and said, oh yeah, it's a hair growth product. And that's where that came from. So for customers, I like to just educate them on that and let them know that that is that is a lot they have to use the product twice a day seven days a week and once they stop using it twice a day seven days a week they will begin to shed that hair that hair that is created with minoxidil is not really anchored into this very well it's it's kind of just a weak hair but if we take care of the problem internally with inflammation and nutraceutical ingredients, such as lavender, soft palmetto, aloe, um, Bocopa Monero, all the products in our, all the ingredients in our products, it's a, it's a long, more of a sustainable use. It's something you can stick with because we're going to shampoo till the end of time. So um, that's what makes it, I think, a lot healthier of a choice. But keep in mind, if they choose to use minoxidil, it's perfectly fine. Um, it's just going to be hard to gauge results. And if that customer wants to let go of minoxidil, please wean them. And so allow that blood vessel to have a chance to get used to having a certain percentage of nutrients as opposed to just being inundated with nutrients from the blood supply. Just, hopefully that makes sense. No, that okay. makes total sense. You know, and, okay, and, and that's what's really important to understand is this is what is occurring. This is what it's happening. This is why it's happening, you know, and, yeah. and to, to set somebody up for the, for the best success possible to be the most successful possible. You know, that's why we have so many different products and so many different things. This is why we, we have these talks and these conversations so we can go through all yeah. of these things. Right. So then the right. other thing, what it leads to is, Everybody, when, when they call into order, they'll say, I want the purple one or I want the green one. Nobody right. can remember the difference between the two, between the revolve okay. and the evolve, you know, so right. it's always either the purple or the green, right? Exactly. Um, you know, sometimes people will say, I want the women's green one or the men's green one. I'm like, no, that's a unisex one. You don't, you know, it's, it's, it just makes your hair grow faster, healthier, stronger. It doesn't necessarily promote uh, new hair growth. So then a lot, sometimes people get, get, get confused on that one. And I'm like, no, no, it, it, there, there is a difference between the two. It has to do with how it's controlling the DHT buildup. That's why there's the men and, and the women's separate formula. That's right. Yes. The men and women, you know, our bodies react differently to hair loss. So women, um, primarily our hair loss is a hormonal issue. 70% of hair loss is a hormone imbalance issue. And so, and one thing that causes hormone imbalance, one big thing is stress. Also, a big thing that causes hormonal imbalance is genetics and things like that and aging and our habits and things like that. So women's is more designed for women's because our bodies react differently to hair loss.
loss. While men have more of the DHT, they need that cleansed out a little bit more because of the testosterone content in men's bodies. So there's going to be more DHT. So there is a difference between men and women's. Our bodies react differently to hair loss. And then, yes, the conditioner is completely unisex. And then just to touch on Evolve, you know, I think of um, Evolve, the green one, I think of Evolve Extend. So extend your growth cycle. So this is more for the person that has, can't get their hair to grow beyond a certain point. We have those people all the time that complain that my hair just won't grow. It used to be so long. Well, there's a reason that their growth cycle has been stunted. And so this kind of can help activate that growth cycle again. It also helps the natural shedder that just sheds a ton. They're not losing density, but they're just naturally shedding a ton. And this kind of helps that out as well. And of course it helps out over-processed, dry, damaged, chemically treated hair. It's working from the inside out, just like Revolve. It's just uh, marketed a little bit different. So I use this a ton on my um, blonde customers because we tend to, you know, we use a lot more chemicals on blondes or someone going through hair rehab and maybe they had a color correction or a bride to be or someone who wants to grow out their style faster or grow out their natural color faster. So this is an ultra healing product. It is not step one when you are trying to address hair loss. Mm -hmm. So it's more of a step two when it comes to hair loss. The reason for that is Revolve needs to be used to restore the follicle health. It's like a foundation on a house. And so once you get that follicle, that machine, so to speak, operating a lot more effectively, the DHT is cleared out, the inflammation is down. Then if that customer wants to switch over to Evolve to speed up that growth, they can do that. Another thing I often say is, hey, because we have the customers that say, hey, I want my hair's falling out and I want it to grow faster. Can I use both? And you can, but you need to use at least two bottles of Revolve first. So about six months of investment to get that follicle in working order. And why would you want to grow a skinny hair out faster anyway, right? No, we want to get in there and grow that nice thick hair out faster and make it like nice and strong and not brittle. And so after two bottles of this six months, months ish, then you can switch over to Evolve. And then at that point, you can kind of play. You can flip back and forth as as needed. So um, that's an option as well. So, yeah, Evolve is an incredible product as well, but it's not your step one for hair loss. And it is a great option. And then they do pair very well with each other once you're you're in that position to be able to be using them. Uh, man, I'm getting a haircut every other week now. You know, I used to be able to go three weeks or, or sometimes four. I, within a week, I'm already starting to pull, you know, around around my ears and, and I, need, I, need, I need to go. So, Through the magic of editing, we can deal with technical difficulties. We are back. We were just talking about the differences between using the evolve versus the revolve you know the the purple one versus the green one and then the other thing now that we were talking about or we were about to start talking about was going to be that okay fine we got our hair growing now and now we need to maintain the hair that we have growing in so that's where the boost product comes in and that's one of the things that i had recently learned about was the difference between having soluble products versus having product buildup. You know, everything I always thought about and knew about hair growth or maintaining healthy hair was internal all the time. And I didn't really pay attention much to the scalp and to the buildup on the scalp. I think about that when we're coming to hair coloring and I say, oh, why isn't the gray covering or why isn't the, the, the you know, why is it still brassy? Why isn't it lifting enough? And then we were always talking about clarifying before doing a color application or any kind of chemical application for that matter, right? Uh, sure. But then we don't think about that for just normal hairstyling because we're always thinking, oh, you know, if you have dirty hair, it's going to build up volume more. Or if you have dirty hair, you know, it's just going to work better. The style is going to hold better. But we don't sure. think about the difference between dirty hair when it's got 10 pounds of buildup from natural oils and 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 three-day-old product versus dirty hair that we're purposely dirtying with product to actually create true volume. So right. that's when I was introduced to the Boost products and that's when I started really wor uh, learning about, you know, soluble, water-soluble and, and being able mm -hmm. to truly use products efficiently, more efficiently to build up that true style. So do you want to take us down uh, that path a little bit 
Sure, absolutely. So to, uh, two things before, well, I'll talk about boost, but two things are when you mentioned scalp. So this is the hypodermis. This is the internal layer. This is the epidermis. So these two guys communicate a lot and they both kind of have to be in healthy working order to have the best results for hair. Mm. So, you know, we do kind of discount hair health, uh, scalp health quite a bit. Um, it is very important. And our skin is our largest organ. Of course, we know that. And so being able to take care of the hypodermis with our five minute treatment um, is really important. And then following up with the scalp health. And so that means using your conditioner, which is 20% of the treatment, aloe is the first ingredient. It's gonna nourish the scalp. Um, it's gonna protect it from UV rays. It has SPF 15 in it. So we've handled that with the treatment and the conditioner, but then all the existing hair needs some love as well. And so that's where Boost comes in. So Boost is a system excuse me, that was created to support the thinning, fine, thin, brittle hair, but it also is, it's for all hair types. So a lot of the ingredients that are in our shampoo treatment are also in our boost products. And so I'll run through these really quick. Also as a stylist, this was a really good way for me to introduce the line to a customer before I became confident talking about hair loss or before I really knew how to address it. I would introduce the products with this by doing a service with these products and showing the volume and the no stickiness, no heaviness. And then it kind of opened the door like, oh, if their styling products are good, their treatment must be really good. So um, the Boost Thickening Foam is an excellent light airy foam, but it's going to give tons of volume. There's no stickiness to it. It's great for blowouts. It's great for textured or curly hair. Um, and it really does help to kind of fortify and strengthen that hair. It's got lavender in it, Bacopa Monero, Saw Palmetto. A lot of the ingredients that are mentioned in our treatment are in these products as well. And then we have um, the densifying leave-in cream, which my favorite cocktail is the cream and the mousse together for a blowout. It gives incredible slip. Um, it does bring down, it tames the frizziness and, and just makes the hair look and feel much better. This is an excellent product for shorter hair as well, curly hair to kind of define the curl, or if someone who's growing, someone who's seeing results from Revolve oftentimes will have like these fuzzy new hairs. And this is a great product to kind of calm those down. Um, so it's not so obvious that you're regraining all that hair before it grows longer. And so yeah, the I cream is cream. really good I use for that, that cream all the time. Me too. Yeah, I love it. And then um, the powder is really excellent. It's a water-based powder. So it's a light, airy, it's like velvet. It's super, super um, smooth. I love this to give a nice volume, like in the crown area. It has memory. So throughout the day, if I reshake it and bring it back to life. This is great for updos. It gives a little bit of the texture. And I love to spray this on my bobby pins to help give a little bit of grit and updos. So you can get creative and find ways for boost, but this is a good one. I have a lot of people with shorter hair that use this as almost a dry shampoo alternative. And that's kind of working. So it's not really designed for that, but it does absorb some of those oils. So that works as well. One of the things um, I had learned about that powder um, was if, if when, when you when you pump it and, and it poofs out, right? Uh, if it rises immediately, that's how you can tell it's really lightweight. If it kind of sits or if it falls, that's how you know it's kind of wet, it's heavy. Sure. So I yeah. love showing that off, that that it immediately just, just goes straight up and, and, it, and it rises, right? Uh, I don't smell so good, but a lot of people tell me they love the way it smells. Absolutely. All of our products have a really nice, clean, non-medicinal uh, smell. I don't know how to describe it, but I'll tell you, I just recently kind of dug into our scent, our ingredients, which are from the plants. And so I'll be producing a document soon that'll give you kind of what our scent is, okay. but it is a nice, clean scent. It's not floral. It's not medicinal, but yeah, it is a, it's a really, really exciting scent. So that's nice. The powder is also good for someone who wants to show texture. So a lot of times people that are fine and thin, you know, they want to show texture because it gives the illusion that there's more hair. So the powder helps out with that. 
And then last but not least is the scalp therapy. So it's the only one with the spray nozzle. This can absolutely be used in between your Zenogen days as like a spot treatment. So think maybe if you only shampoo once or twice a week, but you still really want to take care of your areas of concern, you could definitely just shake this a little bit and spray it on the area of concern directly on the scalp, massage it in a bit and then go on with your style or your day. And that way you're getting a little bit of that treatment benefit. It's going directly to that area and that can help out with the journey as well. This is also good for the person that's used to using a third step and they may want to transition over to Zenogen and they're just so used to having that third step. This helps mm -hmm. them transition much easier. So this can be used every day or in between days on areas of concern and it goes directly in that area. So that's really nice. One thing I didn't mention, Eddie, was the why the five minutes. And so the five minutes is really important. I want to talk about that for just a second. So the five minutes is important because it allows time for our ingredients to get delivered. So green tea is our main delivery ingredient. And we know green tea is an antioxidant. It does reduce DHT and it is a cousin to caffeine. So it has the molecular ability to open up this area right here. So when the shampoo is applied to the scalp, and it sits there for five minutes, that green tea and all of our ingredients are busy working on opening this channel and then delivering these ingredients to the dermal layer. And so we almost build like a shield over the fo follicle or sometimes I'll say like a kernel over that follicle so that those medications and all the things that are causing havoc on that um, follicle do not have a chance to do that. And then during that five minutes, it's working on cleansing out that DHT as well as cleansing the hair and the scalp. So it has um, tea tree in it. So it is absolutely a cleansing shampoo in the same sense that it is a treatment shampoo. So hopefully that helps you clear know, up the five minutes. Yeah, no, it, it, I'm going to use that. Let me tell you. <laughs> People always, yeah. always rag on me about the five minutes. It's so funny. It's it's like yeah. you, you spend five minutes complaining They'll about get used to it. spending five minutes. So when you was talking about... Um, building that kernel around the, the follicle or building that little shield around the follicle, you know, because of the medications. It also made me think about supplements. It also made me think about, you know, a lot of people, everybody in the world that I know is, is heavy talking about, you need to take 10,000 biotin. You need to take 20,000, 50,000, over 9,000. I don't even understand all, all the thousands and thousands of milligrams that everybody's talking about. All mm -hmm. I know is if you take in that excessive amount of anything, you're going to end up with some crazy side effect of something else, right? There's got to be a balance. And like, you know, I'm always talking about that balance sure. in hair. So the other thing, what, what it made me think about now that I'm saying that we're in a crazy world, you know, everybody mm -hmm. is, it's awesome that everybody is concerned about their health, but everybody's freaking out about their health. And, and it, you know, not just the bio, the, 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 the biotin, but vitamins in general, medication, everybody's on a, there's a pill for everything you could possibly mm -hmm. think of. Right. Mm -hmm. And, um, with, with, with the amount of illnesses that is flying around right now, I've learned that any major stress to your system, to your body doesn't actually manifest until approximately six months later. You got it. And and it's in the form, you know, it's a thing. It's an, it's an actual thing. I can't pronounce it very well. It's a telogen effluvium. Yeah, telogen effluvium. Right? Yep. So yeah, it, it's excessive shedding, you know, because I'm getting a lot of clients saying, look, and they're just, and, and they can just pull out hairs or they say in their yeah. brush or in their shower, they have a ball of hair, you know? Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. and, and they think, it just happened this past week. It's like, no, something happened to you a couple months back, you know, whether, whether it was, um, I don't know, so some serious illness, like a cancer, some, some unfortunate environmental uh, illness, like a virus or a COVID or a flu or something, um, mm -hmm. you know, or just, just some insane side effect from such the excessive amount of pills, and, and stress and, and even vitamins, although they're supposed to be good for you, look, right. you take too much of anything, you'll overdose in something, you know? Yep. So what, what yep. is your opinion on, on some of those kind of situations with, with the excessive so, shedding? Yeah. So 
Intelligent effluvium is what it's called, and it just is stress-related, excessive shedding, hair loss. You are exactly correct that things are delayed in our bodies. Mm. And basically what happens is when we're confronted with a stressful situation, we have all these hormones that go into to work for us, like cortisol, adrenaline, epinephrine, all of that. And so our body begins to work off of those hormones, just a survival mode, right? And then once things begin to slow down or life gets better or minimizes or whatever, that's when the repercussions that we put our body through begin to kind of manifest. And so the thing with hair is we, hair is a mini organ, each little follicle is a mini organ, but hair is not an essential tissue. So when we consume nutrients, whether it be supplements or food, all of those nutrients are broken down and literally go everywhere else in the body first. If there is anything left over whatsoever, it will make its way to nourish the follicle. So, uh, you know, keep in mind that hair is not essential. We don't have to have hair to survive. So our body is going to do things to keep our liver, our lungs, our heart, our um, kidneys, all of those in working order. It, the body doesn't care about the hair because it's not an essential tissue. And it's so funny because so, that's all we care. We, we can care less about what the hell our right. body is doing. We just want That's water. exactly right. So we care. Of course, we care because it makes us feel better, look better. And we care licensed professionals and we need hair on heads to make a living. <laughs> and so it's really important. So um, yeah, stress is delayed. Most things in hair. So when we see something happen in our hair, most things are delayed six to eight months. Surgery is one that can take up to two years to be shown in your hair. And that's because we're put to sleep with anesthesia and those heavy metals are kind of encapsulated, those molecules, and they make their way to the follicle. Eventually, they kind of bust open and those heavy metals kind of attack the follicle. Mm. It's kind of the same thing with chemotherapy. Chemotherapy kills good and bad cells. But when it makes its way to the follicle, there are little receptors in here that are like managers and they decide if the hair is going to be produced or not. So when chemotherapy or a toxin period hits the hair, the receptor is going to say, nope, I'm not making hair in this until it's safe. And it kind of shuts down or slows down. And so it's all delayed. So that's kind of goes back to the when we first started this conversation today about the fact that it's happening way before we see it as hairdressers and as customers. So it's important to take care of that. Now with telogen effluvium, that is stress related hair loss. We can absolutely help out with that. And um, it's just a matter of handling it the second that you see it happen. Oftentimes, a couple of things that will allow someone to know that that's happening is their scalp will begin to get really itchy, really red, irritated, sensitive, and hot and boggy is usually the term we use. Like literally, if you touched your scalp and you were intelligent effluvium, it would feel squishy and hot. And so, and that's not with everybody, but a lot of the cases that that's the case. And so, you know, we as custom, as um, professionals need to make sure we're communicating with our customers, asking those questions, you know, has your scalp been itching? Has it red? Let me take a look at it. Is it sensitive? Because then that's kind of our body letting us know, hey, something's not right. Something is not right. And we need to be, we need this inflammation reduced and we need to be back in better working order. And so, you know, it's it's a shampoo and conditioner and there's not anything really easier than that, I don't think, to help take care of those issues and keep in mind that all of it is delayed. And so if someone says my hair's falling out and it just started yesterday, no, everything's fine. My life is fine. My diet's fine. My health is fine. Well, something wasn't fine six or eight months ago, just like you said. And so that's why prevention is key, because we know it's already been happening for months. We got to get back, get on board with it and and help it out as quick as we can. That's awesome. The uh, at least the, the the best news in all of that is that it's temporary. Yes, you know, it's it's not a permanent side effect to anything. It's it's only a temporary uh, state. That's right. So that's there, right. There there is a solution for that. Now, that was a lot of the questions that that uh, a lot of you know that was a lot of the questions that people were hitting us with. So mm -hmm. I'm glad you were able to help me you know, go through all of those uh, issues that people were concerned about. What about education? You know, that's where, do you, do you remember the robot, the Xenogen robot mm -mm. at the shows? Okay. So at, at, at the, at, at the trade shows, you know, Xenogen, you, you got to ask Josh about it and everybody, you know, they, I will. They, 
Yeah, it was the coolest. I don't know who was in that thing, but it was the coolest thing, right? I and feel like it, I remember stories about that now. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, it, it, it gave us an opportunity because it was such an attention grabber. It gave us an opportunity to talk about education, about Xenogen and hair loss and, and the products in general. So right now, with everything being more digital, what is what is the uh, outreach for Xenogen when it comes to education these days? Yeah. So, um, you know, before the, the world is the way it is now, we had tons of educators across the country, uh, licensed stylists who helped to teach. And so um, now we're kind of minimizing that until we can get back on our feet. So I handle all things education. So as of right now, most of our education is free. Um, I can do personalized education for for salons, each salon, um, based upon what their needs are. And then I also have freestanding classes every, um, well, I have to look at my calendar because it's a lot, but typically I put our education calendar on our website, also on our Facebook page, our Instagram, and then we have a private Facebook page for professionals only. It's called Zenogen, um Hair Loss Solutions. And so a stylist can hop on there and become a part of that group and all that education is shown there. So I have about five or six different classes that I offer. I offer a class that focuses on Evolve. So it's really about restoring your hair cycle. It talks about, um, we talk about um, chemical processes and things like that and how Evolve can help. I have a class that's specific to science, hair loss, hair science. So we get pretty deep into that. I have a retail class because it is kind of challenging sometimes to send home a $90 product, you know, shampoo and conditioner. So we talk about retail and how important that is. And um, then we have a Xenogen University, which is a certification class. And so that will be online here pretty soon, but I am doing that um, virtually right now. And so that will encompass everything and the stylist will receive a certificate deeming them a hair loss expert on level cool. one. Oh, very, so, very yeah. cool. Okay. I, I, I want We're the information trying. for that one. <laughs> That's yeah, I'll cool. send it your way. Yeah. Um, no, that would be great. All right. Well, that's going to wrap us up. You know, that is another Here's the Bling presents an industry insiders interview with Zenogen and with Jen Watson, our special guest. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you, everybody, for watching. You got any questions, as usual, hit us up and we'll catch you all next time. Thanks, Eddie. I appreciate it so much. Thank you. Take care.